I want to move to .NET now. Um, .NET is fairly new to me. It's been around for a long time. I believe the point of .NET is it's Microsoft's version of Java. It compiles stuff not to readable, not to object code, but to some partially digested form called bytecode, just like Java. Um, although it only runs on Windows operating systems, so I'm not sure what the point is, but people really love .NET. It's used all over the place, and it's very strange stuff, so it's good to learn how to do it. So I started with this one here, and by the way, a lot of what I'm showing you I got from the Flare challenges. There's uh, FireEye has a CTF every year. They put up these challenges and they give you like a month to solve them, and that's where I learned about a lot of this stuff. Runs on anything now with .NET Core. .NET Core runs on anything other than Windows? Or Mono? So you can put .NET Core on Linux? Anyway, um, Anyway, .NET is very popular for some reason, and it's actually pretty nice to debug, just like Android. Um, okay, and uh, Caitlin says it does run on Linux too. Maybe that's the reason. Anyway, so let's play with .NET, and this is a challenge that came from the uh, Flareon CTF that they have every year. So this file here, I think maybe I modified it. I don't remember, but anyway. <clears throat> .NET is really very easy, much easier than x86 machine code, because it's not really machine code. It's sort of partially digested, like Android apps. Much easier to understand. So save this file. I think maybe I did modify it just to put a flag in it. Anyway, then unzip this thing, which is Downloads. And there it is. You have to use 7-zip and extract to a folder. Okay, and there's the folder. Okay, and in this folder, there's challenge one and PMA 132. Okay, so now this is another time. If you wanted to use Ollie Debug on, um, I wouldn't know if it is a Pokemon. I have no clue about these things. Anyway, um, so if you wanted to use Ollie Debug on a 64 bit program, you did, it doesn't exist. And this, I think, is why they cut Ollie Debug out of here because the more modern programs to replace them, are the debuggers they put here, which is X64 debug and X32 debug. And I never tried these until I was in sort of a hurry, and it's exactly the same as Ollie debug, except they're modern programs. So the X64 and X32 debug right here are probably all you need. So if you want to debug a 64-bit file, you're on X64 debug. And if you just don't think and pretend this thing is Ollie, everything works just fine. <laughs> so here it is. There. And so I open um, challenge1.exe. Okay. So that is downloads. Challenge 1. Okay. And there we are. And, and as usual, I'd sort of like to make the font bigger. Let's see if I can figure that out. Options. Appearance. Font. Ooh, oh, I remember this garbage. I think I have to change it all over the place. Still, this is not too bad, and it takes effect right away, which is pretty nice. All right. So here you have the usual stuff. You have addresses. Here's the instruction pointer right there for you. Uh, and here's the raw hexadecimal instructions. Here's the command. This is 64-bit assembler, so the registers are all 64 bits now, so you see they're quite a bit longer. Um, over here, it gives me a clue where they go to. This is pointing to that string, something about min kernel. That's ntdil. Um, here's the stack, as usual. Return to dil and other things in there, like addresses it's going to use to return from one uh, calling function to the function that called it. And here's dump of some area of memory. So it's very, very much like Ollie Debug. All right, and you can run it right in here. The only reason I did this was the only way I could figure out how to run this thing. So debug run. We'll run this program. And now you can see what it does. It prints this Bob Ross thing. And if you decode it, it changes him to a Dogecoin character, and it prints a message up here, and that message is strangely messed up. And you're trying to figure out how to decode that message. 
That is the goal. All right. So now we can find out how to decode it by finding out what kind of program is here. And I don't know why this thing keeps jumping to the bottom. All right. Um, let's do CFF Explorer. Make this skinnier. And maybe I can somehow keep it under control. Let's close this stuff. OK, find uh, Challenge 1, which is here. Right click. Open with CFF Explorer. OK. And the file type is right here, Portable Executable 32.NET Assembly. So that's one way to find out that I'm dealing with .NET. So if you're going to do .NET, there are various .NET tools that let you see inside .NET, but the one we're going to use is ILSpy, which is very nice, and it's pre-installed on this machine. So here's ILSpy, and I can open that file. Open. Downloads. OK, and now it decompiles it. This is very, very much like um, Android, a uh, Java, Java decompilers. And let me try my usual thing of see if I can make it bigger. Um, display. Font. Neat. OK, well, I made part of it bigger. didn't make this part bigger, but you can't have everything. So the point is, it has a bunch of preloaded stuff here that doesn't matter. Then it has Challenge 1, and you can expand it here. And if you've ever done Java um, reverse engineering, it's very much the same. So you just have to navigate your way through it. And I want to get down here to this button. So it is um, expand the thing, then expand the um, resources, then the The empty curly braces with the X, then form one. Then uh, here is the button that does the decode. Here's that button. So I'm going to see the code that was executed when I clicked that button. And you can see it right here. Now, um, right there you see this code is pretty much readable C code or readable Python code, that sort of thing looks kind of like C. So this is just shifting something right for, uh, so basically dividing a number by 16. This is shifting part of it left for, and picking the left four bits. So it's flipping the two nibbles. The left four bits of a byte go to the right, the other ones go to the left, and then XORing it with 29. That's a very simple transformation. So we now, now we understand the operation, which is pretty simple. Now we need to find the data, and the data is in the resource dat secret. And dat secret is here. So you go to resources and um, rev challenge one dat secret encode. And so find that and save it in the same folder. OK, there it is. Well, I didn't give it the name dat secret, but I should have. Let me try fixing that um, here. OK, I want it to be dat secret, so I just want to take all the rest of this away. All right. And by the way, another great thing about the Flare VM is you have Python installed. So you can uh, solve it with a simple solution script here. And I don't think I'll go any further, but this just reproduces the decoding in Python. Um, so the interesting thing here is we did not really have to disassemble it or read any assembly language or anything. We were able to see high-level languages right away. And that's because this stuff is nuts. Let's go back to that button and point out what happened here. Uh, there, there's the button. This is code. Notice that this is C-sharp code. You can see it in any language you want. You can see it in, say, in principle, in Visual Basic, well, this tool doesn't do it. Or you can go to IL. IL is the intermediate language that it's actually in. This is the actual bytecode that is saved and run in a .NET executable. It's these assembly language looking commands, but they're actually um, hardware independent assembly language, which is bytecode. And if you get a different tool, you can decompile that back into readable source code with C Sharp or Visual Basic. It is kind of nuts. And I know the same thing is true of Android. The way that the 
app is distributed, it pretty much includes the source code. The partially digested form goes back to readable source code pretty easily. And that is something a lot of people don't understand with security implications. So there's a series of these. And uh, there's another one here where you have a meme battle station where cats are, you're shooting down cats or meand cat or something. Yeah. And um, again, you can just go inside the .NET and read the source code and figure out how to win the game. So that's a bit of the joy of .NET manipulation.